get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com. Hi, this is Dave Roundtree, co-author of the soon-to-be-released Demon Street USA, author of Paranormal Technology, an all-around science geek in the paranormal. And when I'm not doing anything, I sit around and chuckle to the antics of the Mallard Report. The opinions expressed in the Mallard Report are those of the hosts and participants and are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any simulcasting radio network or sponsor. All listeners are advised to make their own decisions. It's the Mallard Report. Yeah, the Mallard Report. The Paranormal Talk Radio Show with Jim Mallard as your host. See what life beneath any paranormal activity go inside a world that others don't want to see. It's the Mallard Report. Yeah, the Mallard Report. And that it is. I want to welcome everybody to the Mallard Report tonight. Um, just dealing with some new studio issues that I just, just popped up. And, uh, that's okay. I'm going to deal with them. My guest tonight is Karen A. Dolman. But before we get into Karen, I promised you Ouija board stuff, and we'll get there as soon as possible. Right now, I promised you something else. I want to talk about the giveaway at italkparanormal.com. Go over to italkparanormal.com slash giveaway. And register to win one of the Spectrum Lights. And Spectrum Light has been a great uh, sponsor of the program for many months now. And it's time we're giving one away. So, um, hey, if if I did get this connected tonight, I just seen a big bolt of lightning out my window. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Sorry, gang, just got to throw that out there. Uh, you know, these are... Live shows, and that's what happens. Okay, so go to, go to italkparanormal.com slash giveaway and enter to win a Spectrum Light. And like I was saying, Gary has been a great supporter of the report, so it's time to give back the favor and enter to win. It's a free Spectrum Light, only open to co- residents of the United States, though. And um, if you're not from the United States and you want to enter to win something, send me a message and I'll make it happen. I'm going to bring up my guest right now. Let's see if I can get her on the line again. Should be an interesting show. I've listened to Karen a couple times, being interviewed other places, and I think I've got her. Karen, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Jen. How are you? Doing good. So, my get my guest tonight is Karen Dol- Dolman. That's right. Yes. I, I just got done. Say, right. I just got done saying it. I've I've heard you other places, and, and tonight I didn't get so psyched out about saying the name. I was worried more about other things and uh, right. flipped my mind until the last second. So. For the people who haven't had the opportunity to hear you before, give me the brief overview of who you are and all that fun stuff. Well, I I, I think what I'm mostly known for <laughs> when you hear me speak is is my work with the Ouija board. I've been using the Ouija board for, um, for gosh, 41 years now. And my latest book I wrote is, is about my experiences from the age of eight to where I am now using the board. And, I, and so I talk a lot about um, all the different various beings and consciousness I have communicated with over the years. And it all started for me, I think probably similar to you, Jim, too. I had a very um, paranormal experience when I was younger. Quite often I I would see and have visitations from uh, all kinds of different types of beings. And I really couldn't quite put all that information together at the young age I was. I would interpret it to Santa Claus (laughs) or the Easter Bunny or the Tooth Fairy or a dead relative. I, I couldn't quite put my finger on what was happening. And when I talked about it, I was considered that you know something, something's wrong with me, or I'm making up uh, creative ideas, or I'm just a, I have a good imagination. But as I started reading more and more, as I got a little bit older, and I remember that about nine, ten, eleven, my library at the elementary school had like the most incredible paranormal section. I mean, who knew that back in those days? <laughs> and we're talking like back in the seventies, and we had a great paranormal section. I remember reading everything in there, and then just. From there, learning more and more about um, these different beings. But what what happened that uh, most people hear me talk about wh- when I do shows is is my experience with the Ouija board for the first time. I really did not know what a Ouija board was. I don't even think I even heard about it before I I found one with my friends. My friends were playing with one at their house, and I went down the street to check it out. 
and they showed me how this thing moved, and I thought, well, that's stupid. You're pushing it. You know, it didn't definitely it did not make sense to me that this thing would move by itself. And I, I never share with, with my friends at that, that age these interesting visitations I had had many times over. I just didn't talk about it. But then they said, put your hands on it and try it. And I swore to myself I wasn't going to push it or do anything as I thought they were, and it started moving. And I just said, oh, gosh, they got to be pushing it. And then they went back and did it again, and all of a sudden they started talking to, uh, they, which who they told me was a, a, a friend, a girl, and, they, and I said, well, who is it? And they said, well, that's their dead sister. I said, what? You, you have a dead sister and you can talk to her on, on this board? And they said, absolutely, we, we talk to her all the time. Well, I listened to the conversation, I joined in, and I was just amazed. And at that point, it really sent me on this 41-year journey, an odyssey of using the board and learning how to communicate with all kinds of consciousness, not just dead people. So that's, that's kind of me right now in a nutshell. <laughs> I also wrote another book, too, before this one, which was written with the help of my spirit friends. Although in the first book, the spirits of create the spirit of creativity, embodying your soul's passion, is really more of a therapeutic um, book uh, to, to really recognize your creative juice and flow within yourself and to be able to access that within your life. And that's where my background as being an art psychotherapist for, for a decade. And I still have my licenses, but I don't practice. I, I prefer writing my books and helping people, you know, on, on a spiritual level, communicating with their own higher self or learning to communicate with other consciousness. So that, that's, that's what I'm about. That's quite a bit to be about. And I can, <laughs> you, you, it is. <laughs> you must have read my notes. I love when my guests do that because I was going to ask you about, about the, the spirit of creativity first because I wanted to get I, – I don't want to say I want to get that speed bump out of the way, but that's just unfortunately where I, I kind of put it in my, my agenda because I, I know it's an amazing work and, and the, the art therapy is just amazing. But Thank you. My, my, uh, my listeners are here for, well, the other book. So. Paranormal, sure. <laughs> yeah. What gave that away? The I talk paranormal bit. Oh. <laughs> so when you, I mean, you, you, you were telling me about having your friends or had friends who had a board. So where did it go right after? I mean, after that, because obviously. Well, good, great question. I, I immediately ran home and told my parents. And they said, oh, sure, somebody's pushing it, you know. Right. They, they, you didn't know what to think. They said, that doesn't really work. I said, okay, I don't care. I think it works, and I want one for Christmas. I'm going to ask Santa Claus to bring me one. Because back then, I still believed in Santa Claus. <laughs> and um, Santa Claus delivered that year. And I was said, see, I, I, I'm supposed to have one of these. And that was December 25th, 1973. And the next day, the 26th, is when the Exorcist movie was released. So it was kind of coincidental in a way. That's when I got my start <laughs> before the movie. <laughs> I, I would see that. I, I guess my, I'm sitting here trying to process this. I mean, being a parent now, I'm putting my parent shoes on. Right. So my my little my my well, my son's seven. I you know I could we could have this conversation. I want a well a Ouija board, and I'd be like, no, I wouldn't even see. I wouldn't even far far any further than that. Why so, would you say no? I, I'm curious what you, why you would say that. I don't know. I, I mean, being. I, Here's the thing. You hear all these horror stories, and I just don't want one because I don't like the spell. That's that's my only beef with the Ouija board altogether. <laughs> I have you don't want to spell. I don't want to spell. You don't have a, to. They'll spell for you. I'm a horrible speller. That's I, but see, that's the thing. I was talking. I was talking to somebody about this on Twitter this afternoon, this evening, right before the show started. You know, if they open the door spiritually, well, the investigators open that door all the time, knowingly or unknowingly. So if they use the Ouija board or an EVP recorder or put X, Y, D, Z, Vice in here, it's all the same thing. Touching it, not touching it, whatever. It has nothing to do with the actual touching of the instrument. It has more to do with your mindset and your opening, what you're opening yourself up to. Yeah, I, I, I concur with you exactly. They're, they're very much the same thing. You're putting yourself in a position of uncharted territory, and you're opening up to it. Now, let me, let me say this, though. I, when I was young, they came to me automatically. And I understand you have a history of that as well. And, you know, it's not like I put myself in any place to, to have that. So I'm going to say that my response to that is it's going to happen no matter what if it's supposed to happen. And, you know, if you're open to it. And I, I guess I must have been open to it, but I must have been born that way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can't say my family was open to all this stuff. I mean, they absolutely know that I've used it over the years. And one of my brother will one of my brothers does use the board with me every now and then. But I can't say all of them do. But yet they've seen the, the 
the work I've done with the board and they've been they've seen the sessions. They're 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 kind of amazed themselves. I'm amazed. I'm there's never a time I walk away from a session going, Wow or I don't say wow, I should say, because it, it's just it blows my mind. But but it has been many years you know, using the planchette on the board and many miles under my fingers, um, you know, making that contact. But you know, um Okay, things that are negative can happen no matter what in life. You know, they happen anyway. Our, our lives are always up and down. And people will always say, well, don't put, why put yourself in harm's way? Well, if you do think something's harmful, I agree. Fear, fear is a great device we have within ourselves. It's a tool we, we shouldn't be afraid, to, afraid of. <laughs> but because fear really actually communicates to us and tells us, you know, where our boundaries are and what may not be good for us. So if somebody has that feeling, like you said, it's about the intentions, if you have a feeling that that you know it all bad will happen, then then yeah, you know what? Don't use don't use these tools. Don't go on paranormal investigations. Don't don't go into uncharted territories. But if you're open and you're willing to do um, you know the, the intentions, the protection. There's a lot of things we can talk about tonight in terms of how to prepare yourself for sessions. And it's not unlike anybody else doing spiritual work because I'm using the tool, this tool, as a spiritual device, a spiritual cosmic communicative. Phone is what I what I use it as, and it's not a game or a toy as it's marketed. But I've pretty much always used it that way. Even when I was little, I did mess around with it, and I did get some strange, weird things at times. But at this point, and where I've been using it for at least since 1989, when I had another huge breakthrough with the board, is uh, it's been nothing but a, a, a fabulous, positive spiritual tool for growth and development. But, you know, yeah, if you have a fear about it, don't use it because you will attract that lower vibration of energy. Right. Now, and I, I'm just going to put it back and make sure we're all on the same page here. If you're afraid of cutting yourself when you're cutting your onion, you're going to cut yourself. True. Isn't that true? That's interesting because you do. You tend to draw to yourself. Or it's like, you know, it's like the phenomenon when you want to, you, you want to buy a red car and all of a sudden you see all the red cars on the, on the road. It's that kind of thing. You do draw things to you. Or, you're right. You're so worried about something, you're probably going to draw it to you. Right. So... Or the, my favorite is when you, you get a new car or somebody around you gets a new car, and then you start seeing hundreds of them. Right. And you start waving because you think it's the – and then you realize it's not because they, they're right. not the only person on the planet to have that car. That's right. <laughs> you start noticing. So before we get into starting sessions, I, I've got to dig a little bit more deeper into your personal use of them. Do you have a favorite board? Is it the same board? Uh, in fact, it's sitting here right right in front of me. Uh, this is the board I use um, all the time. It's my board I got in 1973 from Santa Claus. I have a collection of boards from all different eras. Uh, my oldest one is a 1902 board. I love that board. I've used it before. I've used them all. But what I find that I'm most comfortable with, the spirits that talk to me are most comfortable with. They they say we well, they'll say things to me like we try a new board. They go okay, we can try it, and they'll say you know what? Why don't you get your other board out now? We're, we're kind of done. We could tell you're done with it, too. And I said, yeah, you're right. There's a feeling about it. There's my energy about it. You know, it could be superstition, but it's just the fact that I like that board. It's it's what got me started. And, and it's a good-sized board, and it's, it's a masonite. It's not the cardboard ones, and it's not wood. But it has the old planchette, and the planchette moves really well. And so I feel comfortable with that board. And, in fact, on my book, it's right It's right in the center of my pictures of, of my, my board's actually on the cover of my book. So people can see it. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good place for it to be. Actually, I, I I did the show banner and I used the Ouija board. Kind of faded in the background. If you if you don't have the brightness just right on your screen, you won't see it. Because I was looking at my uh, my phone today, oh. and I didn't see it. And then I looked at it again, and I went, Oh, I did do that. Whoops, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> it went, Oh, so getting tricky in my old age trying to learn how yeah, to use Photoshop. Um, well, I don't even have Photoshop, but getting better at it. Um, <laughs> Have you used the Ouija board, Jim, out of curiosity? Have I, you, have you? I have, and I haven't admitted that on my show before, so thanks for oh, that. Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> Actually, I guess I'm going to interview you now. I, I don't go know ahead. No, that's, no, you just did, so I don't think we're – I think the cat's out of the bag. Um, I love to ask questions, too, because I, I like to have a dialogue, but, I, but it's interesting. I, I Yeah, I want to know what your experiences were because I think this is always helpful for people. I always such a positive bent on it. And not that – I mean, I could tell you some negative stories of things I've seen and other people told me. But, yeah, I'd like to know what your experience is, with this is because you are a paranormal investigator. Well, okay, so here here it is. Uh, we were at an old uh, – oh, it's the old building now. Uh, the local veterans group we uh, help support has a building. We were there uh, Halloween of all nights because, you know, what else do we mm. have to do? 
Right. And, and a friend of mine was hosting his radio show that night, and he was doing this live Ouija board seance. You know, he was going running down the list. He had a Ouija board session planned and then had a seance plan. He was just, you know, going all in for all the, the fun paranormal stuff he could have on air that night. So we were getting together as a group to listen to his show, and one of my team members brought a Ouija board with him because, well, what else do we have to do before the show? How so, oh, how <laughs> you know, what else do we have to do? So we did it, and truthfully, I was, you know, you hear all the bad stories, and I'm hearing your good stories, and my story is indifferent. It it didn't leave me a, I, I mean, I'm a believer in spirit, so don't get me wrong, but that mm-hmm. night with that board, with that group of people, left me saying, oh, okay. I didn't really move. You know, so do I, I have I have I used one? Yes. Have I had an, an experience one way or the other with them? No. Yeah, so. it, you know it does take a lot of practice, and, and what I find is if I just try the board with a new partner, which I don't do very often, but sometimes there'll be somebody that comes to me and says they'd really like to try it, and I say, okay, do you have a lot of patience? Because this does require many hours, and not just many hours, many sessions. To start with somebody new. Now, since I've been using it for a while, it tends to work, but we will still get gibberish until that person can really let go and allow. And, and it, it, that's such a trite thing to say and hear sometimes, but the truth is they, they have to be able to allow that planchette to move. And when it moves at first, you get shaky with it. You're like, well, you question, am I pushing? Is she pushing? What's happening? Is it idiomotor motor response? And what's going on here? And so until you settle into the into your comfort, comfortability with it and can allow it to happen and, and, and be okay, okay with this communication then it starts to work but yet when you two people come together on the board i have my own spirit friends i talk to and there's a few that come through with other people i work board with but then a lot of times brand new spirits will come through because it's the joining of our energies and vibration together that creates a different kind of resonance then my resonance with, some, resonance with somebody else would create would be created. So you get a different vibration, different frequency, which can allow different energies to come through. So I'm very careful who I do the board with. You can you can imagine where I'm going with that. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm gonna yep. I'm gonna stop you right there for a second, and you should Go be right very ca- yeah. you should be very careful who you investigate with because again, no matter yeah. if we just replace these terms, I know they're not quite uh, two for two interchangeable, but it's a spiritual thing. Okay, sorry. No, you're absolutely right. I, I'm glad you, you brought that in because this is putting in perspective now. What I'm doing is I'm sitting in my home and the, the comfortability of my home. I'm not going into a, a, you know, a dark haunted house or a house that has these terrible entities or whatever is in the house or hauntings or poltergeists. Although I could sit here in my house and communicate with those poltergeists at a house that could be across the continent from me. I've done things like that before. It's just amazing what you can do. I've spoken with some, some consciousness of a higher selves, that's a whole other level of communication now, uh, got their permission, and, and these people were living in, in England. So there's some weird stuff like that. So uh, so the difference with, I don't, well, I'm not going to say difference. I'm going to say the same as what you're doing. Replace the words. You're doing spiritual work when you go into a haunting. Well, at least you should be doing this spiritual work because you should not ever be dictating or telling a ghost or spirit what to do because we have no right to walk into their domain and tell them what to do. We should, we should allow them to hear their message and what, what, what's going on for them. So to me, it's spiritual and it's very therapeutic. I mean, you want to treat the spirits, the, the dead people, the deceased, uh, and I think we're talking hauntings, we're talking about dead people. Well, you want to treat them with respect. Um, they may be angry and have some issues, but you still want to treat them with respect. You know, they're one of our kind. So when you go into those, those spaces, those places, those houses, or in my world, I just go into the energy with the board, you're, you're opening up into this world that, that where it's their domain, and if for them to come back and communicate with you, it's really hard for them, and for you to go through and to communicate with them, it can be really hard at times, too. And so to to just to go into that space with an openness and, and, and a rela- receptivity and relaxed um, aura about yourself really allows for the communication to happen. And, and it works well with the, the paranormal hauntings when you go into the homes or the places or cemeteries or, or, or circumstances and as well as it works with the board. So I'm glad you brought that up, Jim. And whenever you want to bring jump in and say that, it's <laughs> the, the, the commonalities, I, please do because it, it is very similar. And I think what's happened, though, people want to say the board's demonic uh, because it is an ominous-looking 
uh, tool, and and uh, people like to tell stories about it. And I think there's been some urban legends, if you will, that have been really created and and pushed out of proportion. Although I do think some things have happened, just like in hauntings, and people have brought negative spirits home after being in a haunted place. So there's, you know, it's the same. Like you said, it's the same thing. We just gotta always be prepared and be careful. My guest tonight is Care. Karen A. Dolman. I almost called you Carrie, which would have been, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it is. Oh, movie Carrie is like, oh, God, here we go, Dominic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, we're, ta- we're crossing the streams. Uh-oh, that's a bad Ghostbusters reference. But, uh, oh, it, right. <laughs> and you mentioned, you know, people with issues. There's dead people with issues. There's live people with issues. I think we, we've got to keep that in mind when we're talking about these things. I mean, truthfully, I mean, anyways, I don't want to get too deep into that, but just because no, if somebody no. if somebody comes off as a, a nasty person, I almost said the other word, but I'm just trying to trying to keep it in in the in the parameters of what I need to do. Um, well, the, they're going to be one in in death too. We 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 often think, oh well, we, now we've caught a demon. Well, no, not necessarily. No, not necessarily, and, and most times I would, I would disagree. I think what happens in hauntings, and this is what I've been told through the work I've done with the board and, and some of my own just experiences, is that you know when, when someone dies and they're, they're attached, and they could be attached by a heavy feeling, uh, by their emotions, they could be attached by an object, a person, uh, suddenly they died and, and they didn't expect it. Um, there's all kinds of things that can make a person become stuck, and I, when I say person, I mean a spirit, a deceased being. And when they get stuck, um, they it's a choice they made. It's not like they, they, could, they could choose to go to light and, and, and go into the next level of, of existence. But sometimes they choose to be and remain where they are. I'm not talking about, talking about people that just die and, and stick around to help the family and they turn out to be guides or, or the grandfather who looks after his, his grandson and, you know, they communicate with the family through the the funeral and things of that nature. I'm talking about those that are in hauntings. They've been walking the planet, and I refer to these as earthbound spirits in my book because I've encountered quite a few of them. And when I do run into them, um, and it's probably my therapeutic training, um, working with um, multiple personality disorder, which is now known as dissociative identity disorder. You work with all these different characters within a person, and they're these split-off parts of personalities. And when the negative one comes forward inside of a person, you didn't go, get out of here, do go back. You say, what, what is it you have to say? What is, your, what is your piece here? What is it you want to communicate? So I learned to take a lot of that tools and techniques and, that I used in, in my work with that population when I, when I worked with um, these earthbound spirits. And I noticed it, over the years more and more of them have come to me and, and they see a, a light. What it is is when you join uh, forces with another and you use the board, it creates like this, again, a vibration of frequency, and they interpret it as a light. It, it, and that's the only way they can say it so I can understand it too. And it's like, it's like moth to the flame. They, the ones that are earthbound will come to it. And so you have an opportunity to really communicate with them. And they can come through angry. They can come through just not even knowing they're dead. They can come through in fear. I've had them come through in many different ways. But what I find is when I'm calm and I don't intrude upon their space, and I've made some mistakes and I wrote about those in my book so people can see what I've done and what to do, what not to do when you do some of this work, to, to really respect them. And, when, and if they tell me, get out of here, guess what I do now? Thank you very much for your time. I'm out of there. There's no reason to push that. Now, if I, would, I guess if you're doing a haunting of a house, people want to get rid of that energy, then there's a whole process you work through with that. And that's a process I've done with, with, with several hauntings where there's some stuck spirits, and, they, and I was able to communicate with them to finally get them to be able to allow themselves to, to turn and go into a light. And it's very much like that for them when they are they're receiving the next phase of their development. And I say that because when we die, I was told it's not, you don't really, nothing ends. It's like you move into your next phase of life. They call it still living. That's why I think they call it the afterlife, because you do still continue on. You just have changed forms, and you're still existing. And they are, too. So they, when they finally decide to make that transition, they do. And I've, I've often had them, you know, just been very friendly about, about that, even though in the beginning they weren't so friendly. So... Uh, that's just to put it in perspective again. To, to be yeah. treat, treat everybody with kindness. <laughs> no, <that laughs> work. Yeah, you've got. I mean, you've got to. I mean, you wouldn't want somebody coming into your place of work or you know at a restaurant being a major royal sure. pain, Buchanan, because you know whatever. So you got to treat people with respect. 
you yeah, know, and living you know, dead, respect, indifferent. You know, Respect breeds respect, don't you? Don't you agree? I mean, you give out respect, respect, you most likely will get that same re- in return. I hope so. I hope so too. And 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 if they ever say anything drastically negative or or controlling, I have just put the board away. And I highly recommend people to do that too. I mean, there's no reason to engage in any kind of abusive, uh, verbally abusive, or any kind of behavior like that, it, even in real life. So I just use the same that same mode of operandi. And just say done. <laughs> I, mean, I won't communicate this on this level. So I, I've, I've got a bunch of little. I've been scribbling notes on my notes. Which oh, is, I'm sure. <laughs> which, which is good, except now it's getting kind of hard to read. And yet I have this full notebook of white empty paper, and I continue to scribble on the same sheet. Um, <laughs> I do the same thing. I have this little thing here. And I have this big pad, but I like this little thing that I write on. <laughs> so my my next question is, now, you know, you've been getting these messages for, like you said, 40 years. Have you ever got one that wasn't in English? Yes, I have. As a matter of fact, one came to me in Spanish. But now, now this is what I found interesting about that. I can speak broken Spanish. I, I studied a little bit, but I, I was in Mexico, and um, this I'll tell you how what went down. This, I was in a hotel room, and it was an adult-only hotel, and I was uh, sleeping, and I woke up. I was with a girlfriend, and we were going to go golf early in the morning. So um, I understand you're a big golfer, too. <laughs> Is that right, Jim? <laughs> I was at one point in my life. Not a huge golfer now, but at one point in my life, it was a uh, major part of my life. So <laughs> Yeah, and that's a side note. I just thought I'd throw it in there. But, yeah, that was, it was more important then, so we were in Mexico golfing. And the trip was all about that. So we were going to bed early, getting up early, hitting the, hitting the links. So I, it was about 3 in the morning. And I get out of bed, and I'm walking, you know, past my, my friend's bed to the bathroom, and all of a sudden this spirit pops up in front of me, and I could see this woman. She's ethereal, but Uh-oh. body was missing. And she had her hair up and this dark hair and this beautiful comb and big puffy sleeves, and it was the back of her I saw. And that was even more scary because I didn't see her face. And then I jumped and she disappeared. I went, oh, my God. Well, <clears throat> to make a long story short, it turned out my girlfriend had brought her Ouija board because she liked to do it with me. And I, w- and I d- didn't want her to bring it. I wasn't, that was, the trip was not about talking to spirits. But yet, since she brought it, I noticed she put the planchette out uh, in between our, our nightstand table. It was pointing at me. And I said, my goodness, this is like saying 1-900-CALL-KAREN on the Ouija. <laughs> you know, why would that be out? And so that's what happened there. The, the, they came. They saw that. And when I, we, I said, well, get the board out. Let's, let's find out what this was. She came through, and she said, uh, su sustos. I said, no, me sustos. She was saying, you scared me. And I said, no, you scared me. And then she said some other things in Spanish, which I got the gist of it. And then I said, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to get your full message unless you can speak in our language. What happens is, the spirits. I have a lot of spirit friends or bouncers or, or you can call them gatekeepers on your side, who help me with like communicating with, with in, energies with other languages, energies such as animals who don't have a language like we have. Um, they they work more through the feelings. They help interpret. So what happens on, when they come through another language? They actually help interpret it and work with them to put it in English so I can understand better. Isn't that wild? <laughs> that, that, that is wild. And I was just sitting here thinking, a few months ago, I had a guy on who was talking to me about animal EVPs. And, of course, mm-hmm. um, I sent him – it wasn't a – see, here's the problem. I'm going to explain this to you. And I don't, I don't owe this to anybody, but I'll explain it to you because it's kind of the cute little long story. I was up 2 a.m. one morning sending emails to random people. Right? And he was one of them. I wanted to get him back on the show to talk about this some more. Okay. Well, I didn't address the email directly to him, and I didn't sign the email. I, You know, like I said, I was just firing off messages. They weren't – it wasn't a bulk message by any means. This was a direct message to him. I, I mean, the context of the message was about his stuff. Okay. Right? I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, it wasn't like it was a spam letter that everybody got. Obviously, I was asking about him and his, you know, his animal VP project and how it was going. So I get back a message. He says, oh, it's going good. And a few days later, I get a message from this gentleman who who, who is more than welcome back on the show, and I, I, I'm i cool with it. I, I We may have said some words that we both kind of re- disagree with now, but he fired back an email, why don't you address it to me personally? And I'm like, because I was sent, there was no other emails, you know, it was a single address to you, uh-huh. and it was from me. It was from me. I don't have people that work for me. So when you get a message from my iPhone, it's from my iPhone. (laughs) 
It's not from right. a producer or a staffer. It's from me. I was generally checking up on you. I mean, I, if you look at the time of the email, you could kind of figure maybe I, I was, you know, I maybe I shouldn't have been sending emails at the time of night. You know, maybe I could have, you know, done it in the morning and done it more professionally. But at that, you know, how that is. We were talking about getting messages from spirit friends, and there were times where I'll just reach out. Ran, I mean, that was as random as it gets. Two thirty in the morning. I, I need to connect with this person right now, and I did, and it didn't, it, it hasn't panned out. So it is what it oh, is. Oh shoot! Have you heard any of his uh, any of the animal EVPs? No, I haven't. That's the kicker. Oh darn! That would be really cool. I have not heard an animal EVP myself either. Although I talk to my cats, and dead dead cats and alive cats, and other people's animals all the time on the board. Um, <laughs> I haven't heard haven't heard their EVPs yet. Uh, it, is it? Lim- I mean, we're talking cats. I mean, this is this is getting kind of in that gray area here. I believe it. I, know, and, I believe uh, it. Listen, I didn't want to believe it either, Jim. It was the weirdest thing. It was in nineteen. What year was that? Nineteen ninety six. My angel came through and said, "You're not gonna believe this one, Karen." Because I mean, I was just going. I, I'm blown away every day. And she said, "You're not gonna believe this one." And I said, "What?" And she, no, she's talking to me on the board, okay? And this, they talked to me just like, like you and I are having a conversation. And they spell in complete sentences, and they use the user pronouns and correctly and all that stuff. Once in a while, they misspell. But um, she said, you're not going to believe this one. I said, what? She says, well, somebody wants to talk to you. Here he is. And all of a sudden, my cat came through, who's alive, sitting there looking at me. <laughs> He's sitting in a chair across from where I'm doing the board with my partner, looking at me and said, Hermes cat, I love you. His name was Hermes. Hermes Trismegistus. He said, Hermes cat, I love you. I went, what? I go, dude. <laughs> I said, to my, did my cat just talk to me? And she goes, yes, absolutely. That's something new. Um, the animals can communicate, not even not even just being dead. Um, you can communicate with things that are alive. And I already knew I could communicate with people's higher selves because I did experiment from 1989 through 1993, four years doing nothing about that. And I have, that's, all this is in my book, by the way. And my first animal communication is in my book, and I put a whole section on the conversations I have with my cat. Um, it, 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 you know, they don't want to talk all the time. They really think it's kind of silly. They, they feel like they're already in communication with me. But um, I know some animals are really happy to communicate, um, especially when they know their person that, or they died and they know their, their companion, your human companion is really missing them. They always have nice things to say. And it usually is very childlike. It's like a maybe a three-year-old, two-year-old talking to you. It's more quick, short sentence, not even full sentences, but um, for example, one of my cats will say to me, can I have tuna now? I like it a lot. It's my favorite. Things like that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, let me finish my session. I'll get you some tuna. It, it's, it's silly things like that. But they also do say some um, interesting things, interesting things that are just, it's always very cute, but interesting about their perspective on life and, you know, how they really are here to sh- show us unconditional love. And that, that is their that is their function. And it's what they want to do. And so they, they, they try to teach us about that. And in a way, we're kind of inferior to them on that level. And their, their communication is all through um, body and feelings. It's, it's what they sense. It's, you know, it's instinctual. And um, when they communicate with you, you know if you have an animal or a pet, you can feel it when you look at their eyes. And, and they'll tell me that. They say, you know what I'm feeling when you look in my eyes. They'll tell me stuff like that. But it's it's not super profound like I get from some of the other beans, but it's it's very um, sweet and enduring. Yeah, and so here I'll, I'll boy, I haven't told you're getting a lot out of me tonight. I don't know Let's if this do is it. Good, if, I don't know if this is good or bad, but it, uh, that's all good. I'm just picking. I think on. it's good to disclose in a healthy way. Okay, so I want to <laughs> tell you my therapist. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> we should be laying down, Jim. We should be doing psychoanalysis right now. You know, people tell me I should stand up to do the show, so we're kind of in that we're going to meet in the middle. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to kind of Twitter version this just because I don't want to give too many details out about the content. Uh, not not that it has any impact on the story, but I had a friend, uh, a friend of a friend, but we were friends outside of this friend, but I met them through this friend. I know, it's a lot of friends in there. But yeah, they, friends. they called me and said that, the second friend is been, is sick and in the hospital. They rush him to the hospital. It looks like a possible heart attack. Going to do surgery. You know that whole all you know the all the energy that goes with that. And they'll keep me up to date. And I said, okay, that was late one night, and I I had, can't say I forgot about it because obviously I was shocked and you know tr- I was waiting for the update about it and it had been well this is the next afternoon. I hadn't heard anything, 
And I didn't really want to ask because, you know, you don't, you're don't you always scared of that answer. And, you know, it takes a little time for some information to trickle up from the family. And, you know, so you don't want to push in that case because, what I mean, it's they got enough deal going on that you don't need to, hey, you know, what's going on. They need to deal with what they're dealing with. And whenever they tell me, they tell me. So I was sitting down back on my swing, and I, and I was just sitting there thinking about it. And the next thing I know, there's this hummingbird that comes over. Oh, lovely. About seven feet away from me. Well, don't say lovely yet. And it's in my <laughs> eye. Well, hold on. Let me finish the story. And we make eye, I make eye contact with this hummingbird. It was this connection moment. And I went, okay. So I looked at my phone, and I looked at the time and whatever. It's kind of weird. It kind of struck me as weird because, well, you know, hummingbirds normally don't get within that close and, and freeze unless they're out of feeder, and even then they kind of scatter off. So later that night I get a call from the friend who told me, unfortunately, the other friend had passed. And I said, I just mm-hmm. I just have to ask you a question that is really insignificant in the big scheme of life, but I need to know. What time did he pass? Yep. Uh, one fifty-five. I don't remember exact time. And I said, Oh, okay. And I just kind of left it at that. Well, I seen the hummingbird about 2 o'clock. So, mm. yeah, well, as, we as the wind blows, as the wind blows, so to speak, it was probably real, t- you know, as fast as it could get here. You know, Jim, I, that's, a, that's a great point you brought up. When people die, often um, they will come back. I want to say come back. Let's see. They use the energy of the animal to be a sign to a person. And it can be something very unusual, as you said, with the hummingbird stopping and making eye contact with you right at the moment of death or right shortly after. It could be being at a funeral, and I've seen, I've had this happen to me too, where uh, there's no birds around at all. Of a black crow comes and sits right there, and the only tree that's right there by this this burial site. And I just knew that that was my relative. It's and you get a feeling, you get a sense, you know. It's a knowing you have. And so I've, the angels have told me that they too, when they, because they're not physical beings, and never been. A lot of them have never been physical beings. When they come through, they come through with the help of an animal. So um, I remember a, a cat came to me once, and I, I really love cats. So <laughs> not surprised a lot of cats do come to me. But but I was on the side of a road. Uh, I had some car problems, and I was I had to change a tire actually. And and it was kind of kind of scary. It was way before cell phones, nobody to call, way out by myself. And I just thought, well, oh my, why am I going to change my tire? So it was just a rough day. Everything was going wrong, and there it was the flat, you know. And I, and I knew I could change it, but just having to do it. So I get out and I'm doing it, and all of a sudden I'm here. I'm on a big, busy place, road, hi- highway, and there here comes this cat from nowhere. I'm like, oh my god, what what what? And the cat brushed up against me, and it gave me a sense of calm and a sense of no worries. And it wasn't like I went, oh, I'm calm. I, it, you felt it. I can't really explain it other than saying I felt that sense. And then the, the I looked around. The cat was nowhere to be found. There's just no way it could have just got away that quickly and showed up and just left like that. But I felt that sense of peace. And I found out later, um, my angel said, did you like that when I came to visit you on the side of the road? I was like, oh, <laughs> so here we go. So I'm not surprised to hear that. I kind of knew where you were going with that story because people tell me all the time uh, reports of animals showing up. And, and it's and it might, oh, the other way the, the deceased love to come back too is through smells. There'll be smells or, or you'll be woken up at a night at a certain time or you may smell that perfume and there's no perfume at all anywhere around in that, in that room where you are or, or a breeze. I've heard stories of tumbleweeds uh, in Minnesota, blowing in through a door. They don't have tumbleweeds in Minnesota. I mean, weird things like that. And when they looked at the tumbleweed out of the bed, it was, it was gone. It was not even there. It's like, did they, three people make that up? It's, it's things like that just to give you a sense of we still continue on. So I, I love those kind of stories. I really do. It's good stuff. Okay, so I've got two totally different divergent topics I want to get into. before. I guess we're running out. I mean, not really running out of time, but we've got... 20 minutes left or so. so. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it, 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 it's it goes. Fast. It goes I, I, it's the fastest hour in Paranormal Talk Radio. That's my tagline. I, I, I was thinking we've only done 15, 20 minutes, but yeah, wow. <laughs> so I don't take any breaks. I just go for it. That's, you know, because I've That's only got good. that time. So, okay. So where I want to go next is you, you mentioned earlier preparing for a session. Mm-hmm. So walk me through the preparing, and then obviously you can just keep going into what you do post-session. Yeah, oh, good, good. I'm glad you asked about posts, too, because that's just as important as opening a session. I call them open message circles, but when I get ready to do an open message circle, a session with the board, I have 13 steps, and these are detailed in the book. I'm just going to cover the an overview and give you, like, a, 
a generality of the steps that I do. One is you've got to prepare yourself internally, and that means your own emotions, your feelings, the the, the weight of the day. Have you dropped? Have you have you let go of all that energy? Dropped it? That's that maybe was your work day, and are are you ready internally? Are you are you starving? Are you are you hungry? Are you you've got to be in a good space inside. And 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 I always tell people don't imbibe on some you know mind altering substances before you do this work. It, it's just it, it's it's wrong. <laughs> you can pull in the wrong energies. Just don't do it. So are you internally okay? And if that means if you're you're feeling well, don't have a headache, you're not sick, any of those things will, will hinder the, the communication, will also hinder the type of energy you bring in. That, that's the main thing. The, externally now I prepare the session, and there's some things I can control, and I'll tell you about the things you can't control. But externally I, I will make sure I do the session in a space that's free from distractions, nobody's coming in and out, um, that, and I turn my phone phone off. Everybody that's with me, they, their phones have to be off. Um, make sure you know we're sitting in a place where we're comfortable, so we can reach the board and not get tired in our bodies. Um, we always have water with us to stay hydrated. Um, we, I light a candle. Sometimes I burn incense, and I'm just setting the mood. That's one of of more uh, spirit, spirituality, uh, more feeling like I'm stepping into a sacred space. And when I do this work. I really treat this work as a sacred space because because the the work I'm getting from it is very sacred, it's very dear. So I make sure we do that, and then and then um, we do a breathing exercise. I won't go into the details here, but that helps you really ground yourself and get into a focused awareness within yourself, how you feel inside, and ground yourself and calm and relax. Then we do a, a time when we hold our hands, my partner and I, and I say a prayer, a prayer, an incantation. All this is in the book, by the way. But it's it, the prayer is really to protect ourselves, to open the, open up to the messages, um, to bring in our highest good, wisdom and clarity and guidance, um, but to have the white light around us and to protect not just myself, this person, the board and the portal, but to protect the animals in the house, to protect my, my partner's car when she or he goes home. Um, to protect people that are in this room when they drive back in their cars, to protect my house, everything, just to really give respect to the whole space. Now, the things I can't control, and I'm just going to mention them here briefly, are atmospheric effects. And what I mean by that is I've had a hard time communicating with the board, with the spirit friends, and, and vice versa, them with us, when there are solar flares going on, when there is sometimes eclipses of the moon or eclipses of the sun. It just depends. Certain alignment of the planets, um, certain conditions in the atmosphere, such as um, high winds, some storms, sandstorms, uh, they can't come through, and they'll tell us later why. And so those things I can't control, but everything else I can in terms of setting up a good ambiance. And then when we do the session, it's always done respectfully. I'm always writing everything down, and and then you know we have a dialogue. In fact, as you and I are kind of talking back and forth, that's what they do with me. They don't just go. Da, 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 da. Here's your answer. They say, "This is what we're, this is what is going on, and, and we've thought about this. Now, what have you done? What are you thinking about? Have you have you stop, thought about that? What we talked about last session? I say, well, I, I did. And this is what I came up with. They said, well, what do you think the answer is, or what do you think? Which direction you think you should go? And then I'll I'll say something. They say, well, have you thought about this? And so it's really a give and take. They may open up the session with like a paragraph or two pages, and then we go into it. And I might ask questions back. I might just talk. But when I'm talking, my partner still has her hands on the, on the planchette, so do I, that they will interrupt us and talk while we're talking. So it's a conversation at all times. It's really kind of cool. Then when we're done, I always say thank you. A lot of times they're done before we are. Sometimes the sessions are a half an hour. Sometimes they're an hour and a half. They just say they're done, time to end. And they usually give me a, a closing statement. I always say give us some kind of closing statement to end this on. And they have their last words. And we, and we always say thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate all that you've shared with us. We appreciate you being a part of this process. And with that, we say goodbye or good night and thank you again. And then what we do, we put the board away, we put the planchette away, we blow out the candle, we move from that space and we go back into kind of our mundane life. We leave that <laughs> sacred space and go back into the mundane. So, And that's important to do that and to close it and, and to put everything away. It, it, this is my special tool. This board is never out on display. It is my tool that I always put away in a, in a, in a safe place. I like to keep it. And, um, it's, you know, it's not out for, to, you know, for people to touch and stuff. It's, it's a space, sacred tool. So it's important to do that, to open it really well and to close it really well and then to step out of that space. 
So I guess my first question is, out of all of that, see, I've, I've, I actually scribbled on a different sheet of paper now, so I can actually oh, follow wow. up with these intelligent you questions. Oh, cool. uh, are you writing the stuff? I mean, how are you keeping track of this? Are you writing down? You have one hand on and one hand on a notebook? Or? Yes, I do, because a lot of times it's just me and a partner doing this work, um, and. A lot of people, I have a certain way I code the, the writing and who's speaking to me and where, where I write. I'm so used to doing that. I've kept copious notes of all my sessions since 1989, and that I was able to write my book from all those sessions verbatim, the dates. That's why I have dates and who was there and what the questions were and the verbatim messages because it wasn't on memory. It was from these copious notes and these notebooks I kept, and I keep them to this day. So every time I have a session, if it's just us, I'm writing. And typically, other people come in, they they they're not. They don't write the same way I do, so it's hard for me to decode it if I ever want to write something else. And I go back in my messages a lot, and I and I use them. I use them for uh, future books that I'm writing, and one particular book I'm working on right now from some of the work I've done on the board with spirit friends and other friends of mine that are alive. <laughs> and it, anyway, so I, I, I do. I have my left hand on the plan check because I write with my right hand, and my right hand is writing and turning the page. And I just letters come like this, H, D, Q, R, P, T, L. M N U V that fast and I'm writing I don't even know what it's saying and I'm just calling them out out loud because they we have a we have a ritual that where they stop on a letter and not until they stop on it I will say it they can't just pass over it I want to make sure we're clear on the letter and so they'll stop and it's but it's really quick the way we do it and then I just write and then we're done I I separate the words out we look at it my partner and I and, and we, we get clarification we don't understand something. But other than that, the messages are really coherent and clear, so we can pretty much get every every message every time. Not that I'm going to quite a process. Not not that I'm going to encourage this, but I have to ask this: Do you have a? I mean, now that you have a relationship going, so this this doesn't necessarily apply. But if somebody's trying to get into this or start doing this, is there a list of like general questions they should ask every time, or should it just be? You know, I, I talk about that. So that's a great question. I talk about that in my book. I say, this is what I see novices doing, and, and people reach out to me all the time. I get a lot of letters and emails, and um, I've met with some groups before. But what I find that novices do is ask only yes and no questions. Are you here? Um, are you dead? <laughs> <laughs> Did you live here often? You know, they might say, okay, they might get some random thing like the name John. Oh, so your name's John. Yes, no. You know, I say don't do that. What you want to do, and I know you're doing it because you're impatient. Listen, I'm probably one of the most impatient people, but this this kind of work requires a lot of patience. And, and quite frankly, this, this work has taught me a lot of patience with this process because it is a process of unfolding and allowing them to, to practice spelling and communicating through dimensions, um, through parallel dimensions often, to back to us. And so it, it's, a, it's a feat. It's a feat on both sides. So asking yes and no, you get nowhere. What you do is you just develop yes and no in a lot of erroneous answers um, because there's, things aren't black and white there's a lot of shades of gray in everything in our life and so it's better to hear the open-ended you hear the story and hear the open-ended answers so i in my book i'll tell you some things to ask but i'll mostly tell people to ask open-ended questions so instead of saying um you're asking that you're in a house and is it haunting and you say uh so are you the are you the ghost that i'm supposed to talk to yes i would say hello who is here that wants to speak with me and then they come through uh, me, your, my name is so and so, and I go, okay, so and so. Tell me a little bit about your message. I, I don't ever say yes and no. The only time I use yes and no is if there's a misspelling and they wrote a word like free and they meant to spell the word fear. This happened the other day, and I said free. Uh, okay, I say I, I say was that word supposed to be free? And they say no. I say what was that word supposed to be? And they wrote fear. So there's some misspelling sometimes, and I'll get clarification on that. Or if they give me a date or something on something or a person I'm talking to, I'll say, did I say that correctly? Is this the date? And they'll say yes or no. So I, that's the only time I use yes and no. That Don't get in the habit of using yes and no. Well, the other thing, I just kind of want to mention this again in passing, but I'm proud that uh, – not proud. I'm happy that you mentioned that people should drink water. I know that's – I've – I know I've railed against energy drinks and all that other fun stuff that kind of um, change your Alters your function. Yeah. yeah, it does. It alters so. you. That's the, and I'm glad you, you you paired to that as well. I'm sure you guys do too. You know, it, it, you really want to be a, a, a clear vessel for this type of work. And I know when you do paranormal stuff too. You want to you want to be as, as clear as you can in your consciousness and in your mind yourself when you do this work. And so, what I tell people, 
when they do this. They if they're going to venture into this this uh, world of Ouija, and uh, it's really so much beyond that. It really is. That's why it's really about speaking to other consciousness and other beings, and, and it's just it's just amazingly crazy and, and incredible. But it's really important to have an, your own spiritual practice in place. And what I mean by that is some kind of practice where you understand yourself. You understand that you can trust yourself. You know your inner centeredness. You know how to meditate. Maybe it's meditate, or for me, it's breathing exercises that get me right to my center where I can go there and be, in a, be calm even in the midst of a storm or even in the midst of chaos. I can find that calm space. And I practiced that over the years, many, many years in tandem with doing this work. And I found that the more I, I do this spiritual practice of mine. I have many different things I do. I meditate, I journal, I do dream recall. I do I spend a lot of reflective time. I write um and I I have my own I have my own connection with with divinity. And by by doing those things, anything I get from an external source, whether it's a human living being or it's an ethereal being, it's I mold around. I don't necessarily take anything at face value. It's it's learning to know who you are and trust in yourself. And when you do that in tandem with this work, you're not going to get caught off guard with some weird stuff. And even if you do get some weird stuff, which can happen, um, or negative stuff, you will know what to do with it. And, and you're not going to have a, a weird uh, paranormal um, hauntings and things happen in your house because you're doing the Ouija board. You know that's not going to happen. But it's su- it's super important to take this seriously. And uh, although they've told me to lighten up sometimes, and, and, and I love that because they have a great sense of humor, and they will joke with me, and they, they'll spell LOL to me and things like that, even like you text, they'll do. And they're funny because they're, they're, they know they know what our lingo is, and they pay attention, and they'll talk to us in that language sometimes, and it's it's quite humorous. But, um, yeah, it's it's important to have a balance of, of your own practice along with this. Squeegee board use is not a spiritual practice, people. It is just a tool to use. It's a tool to use to be in touch with other consciousness. The spiritual practice is not using the Ouija board. Okay. So, unfortunately, I've got to ask you this last question, even though I don't want it to be my last question, but you know how this all works. Yeah. So where can, people, fi- where can people find the book and find well, you? Um, and, you know, you know what to tell me. Sure. You can find me on my website, which is Karen A. Dahlman, D-A-H-L-M-A-N.com, Karen A. Dahlman.com. And both my books are there. I, I do auto, I do autograph copies and sell them there. Or you can go to Amazon.com and you can get the books for the same price. Or you might be able to get your discount if you're one of those members. And there's also a Kindle version of both books there as well. And um, you go to my website, check it out. I got I have some articles up there and talking about some of the future works I'm, I'm working on. And, and all the interviews, such as this interview with Jim, they will be posted on there, and you can listen to other shows I've done. I have all the links to them, and there's some little TV stuff on there too. It's all it's all been fun. But yeah, if you could find me on my website, and that, my email is also Karen at KarenAdalman.com, and there's a contact page on my website as well to go directly to me. And I will get you a copy. Of, I, I'm going to send you the YouTube copy because that copy's up there forever. That way. It's Ooh, better. I would love that. That's it, that's even better. Perfect. Better and uh, and I'll be. I'll, I have to get you back on because it's not. We're not done yet. So we'll figure that out. Oh, thank you, Jim. Yeah, I would love to be back on. I feel like there's so much more to share. <laughs> and and I think I think with your expertise in the, in the paranormal world too, there'd be a lot of good conversations to de- to develop <laughs> from yes. this conversation. We just kind of uh, rub the surface. I don't even want to say scratch the surface of it all tonight. So you're right. Uh, all right. I don't think you want to listen to me read my sponsor reading all that fun stuff. But I'm going to tell you to have a good evening. I'm going to say thank you, Jim, so much for having me, and and, and uh, I, I like your listeners, and I like your program. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Karen. Tonight is brought to you by Spectrum Light, and if you haven't signed up for the free giveaway, it's a free giveaway. Come on, gang, go over to italkparanormal.com and sign up for the giveaway, italkparanormal.com slash giveaway. Get on it. The contest ends in a couple weeks. You want to be involved. It's easy. It's simple. If you're on Twitter, it's like four clicks. You're done. Out the door. Okay. My final thought tonight is something. I'm going to piggyback on something Karen said, and I, I didn't mention it to Karen. I was going to, but obviously ran out of time. But here we go. You'll notice she used the word "work" over and over and over again tonight when she was referring to her work with the Ouija board. It isn't her thrill seeking. It isn't her hobby. It isn't something she does in her spare time. She has a commitment to it and a passion for it. Get it? Okay. 
just take that with a grain of salt when you go out to what we were talking earlier, me and Karen, about how we're close to interchangeable terms about paranormal investigating and using the Ouija board at some points in our conversation tonight. So I want you as an investigator, if you're an investigator, I have a thousand listeners who aren't investigators, but they'll appreciate this as well, to put the work in and quit being stupid with it and just running around thinking you're getting answers and helping people when you're really not. So match Karen's passion, do the investigating, put the work into it, and understand that it's a spirit. And this is the other thing we were talking about, so I'm kind of wrapping it all up into a neat little bow here. This is the other thing we were mentioning. It's a spiritual thing. It's nothing that you can just drop in and do for a few minutes and then take back out and say, oh, that never really happened. You have to do it right. You have to have a process for doing it. Again, it's an amazing concept. It's an amazing idea. And I, I really do look forward to having Karen back on um, to discuss paranormal, the Ouija, all, all of it much further. Much, I mean, it's going to be an ongoing conversation, I get the feeling, with all of this stuff. So the bottom line from what we can take away from tonight's show is that A, it's work. B, you should, you should, you should really drink water before an investigation, not Red Bull. And, and C, have some respect. Not everything's demonic. Not everything's evil. I mean, there are there are people out there with chips on their shoulders now that we all know, right? Next week, I have another great guest scheduled, and I hope to see you all here listening to the Mallard Report. Until then, be safe. Well, before we flip that on-air sign to the off position, a quick reminder. For all things about the report, previews, and reviews, go to italkparanormal.com. That's italkparanormal.com. Good night. If you're looking for a radio show where all things paranormal go, well, tune in and be in the know with Jim Mallard as your host. Come and see what lies beneath paranormal activity. The Mallard Report. Yeah, the Mallard Report. Tune in and listen every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, right online. It's the Mallard Report. Yeah, the Mallard Report. Get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com.